this thing. What is this thing? It looks like a rodent. No. Huh. Well, it has fangs. Is it in the mongoose family? No! What? Well, what is this thing supposed to be? Let me check my notes. Nuh-uh. This is a rock hyrax, evolution's attempt at gaslighting the human race. No, that intro was not a joke. This, yes, this, came from an elephant. How in God's name did we figure that out? You have to look at the feet. These are unlike any feet a rodent or mongoose would have. In fact, their toes are closer to ungulate toes, and when we trace back their history, it actually makes a bit of sense. You see, little Hyrax homie here is in the order Hyracoidae. I can't guarantee that's how it's pronounced, but I'm just going to shoot in the dark and say it is. Well, the creatures in Hyracoidae were not always so tiny. In fact, millions of years ago, hyraxes were extremely widespread and diverse, and this is most evident in the species Megalohyrax. These guys grew to be the size of a tapir, which, if you don't know what that is, well, I guess we'll have to make a video on it in the future. They also have sneaky similarities to elephants to this day, with similar toes as we explained, small tusks, higher brain functions compared to similar small mammals, a surprisingly good memory, as well as having some similarly shaped bones, the picture begins to come clearer as how these guys are related to elephants and manatees. But how did they get so small? Well, in layman's terms, the theory is that these large hyraxes were not efficient enough when compared to other herbivorous megafauna of the time, and could not compete with them for food. As usual in nature, two options were presented to them. Option 1, CEASE BREATHING! Or, option 2, DOWNSIZE. <laughs> Look how tiny it is now! And there you have it, in the most simplest terms possible, our bizarre little evolutionary conundrum. But there is so much more to the Hyrax. The Hyrax continues to be the total hipster of South Africa by having another feature that is completely unique to it and no other mammal, the dorsal gland. This gland, only found in the Hyrax, is a bit odd as it is literally on its upper back and is used for social communication and territorial marking via the process of excreting an odor. That's right, it has a stinky gland between its shoulder blades that it uses to talk. To give you an idea of how weird this is, I'm going to give you an example. Imagine you have just moved into a college dorm and your new roommate asks you what room you want. Do not answer him. Instead, take off your shirt to reveal a giant oily boil that secretes a foul odor. Proceed to rub it all over the walls of the room you what want you while making direct eye contact with him doing? to let him know that you are the alpha and you ain't no bitch. The Hyrax just be quirky like that though. As far as their ecology goes, rock hyraxes are distributed throughout the Middle East, Saharan, and Sub-Saharan Africa, proving that they are quite the adaptable little elephants in hamsters' clothing. They make their home within rocky crevices, often finding shelter in sedimentary rocks that have high elevation to offer security from predation. They live in colonies of up to 80 individuals, all centered around one adult male, his mates, and their subsequent offspring. Hyraxes play it fairly safe when they forage, staying close to their den and feasting on whatever surrounding edible plants they can access. Hyraxes are also very complex in their social groups due to their intelligence, and an example of this is their ability to display, quote, structural balance. Now, structural balance is a very complicated psychological topic, but to put it in the simplest terms possible so I can hold your Zoomer attention span, don't be offended, I have the same problem, I am one of you. Structural balance is where the phrase, the enemy of my enemy is my friend comes from. It is how we keep a sense of balance in our relationship with others so we can avoid a level of conflict with too many people at once. This also works in terms of positives as well. Hyraxes operate with the mindset that the friend of my friend is my friend. This allows them to have a very cooperative and efficient social group where conflict is at a minimum. They are also the first non-human animal that has been observed to operate with structural balance, making them even more interesting. I'm very surprised not many people talk about them. 
Now, our Hyrax homies are incredibly vocal. How vocal? Imagine a group of socially inept MCU fans talking about the new Spider-Man movie. Imagine all the incessant, bizarre noise-making coming from them. Did you guys see new Captain America? Did you see Black Panther? Did you see new Wakanda Forever? Funko Pop Wakanda Forever? Funko Pop Wakanda Forever? Yep, that's how vocal the Hyrax is. In fact, they sing complex little songs which contain such a unique variation from individual to individual that these vocalizations are actually used within their own social group to distinguish members from one another. Just check out these vocalizations. <laughs> alright, alright. This is what they actually sound like. Similar to the meerkat, an American prairie dog, they take advantage of their complex social group by foraging in numbers and using sentries to warn of predators. And speaking of predators, yes, the Hyrax is even unique in the way that it gets bodied. The rock Hyrax is routinely tormented non-stop by the Varroa's eagle. Now, I have no idea what the rock Hyrax did to this bird, but it must have been terrible. I can only imagine the rock Hyrax got the eagle involved in some kind of insurance fraud scam, or maybe the Hyrax stabbed the eagle's dad to death. Regardless of what it was, this eagle absolutely hates Hyraxes. Most predators will prey upon a wide variety of animals. It is rare we see a predator primarily target a specific species. But this thing, this thing lives almost solely off of just the Hyrax. In fact, in many cases, the Hyrax makes up over 90% of its diet. And it's not like the Hyrax is the only animal it can kill in its region. There are plenty of small mammals in sub-Saharan Africa, but this thing is hell-bent on eliminating this tiny hipster. I hate you. I hate you so much. I, I, I don't even know what I did. You have the vote of the wrath of God. Oh, hey, it says in my notes that the male rock hyrax has another unique feature similar to elephants. <laughs> Let's take a look. Aw, look how cute. <gasps> ah! 